One in every 60 U.S. households filed for bankruptcy in 2005. It's likely someone in your family, a neighbor down the block, or a co-worker in your office is in bankruptcy court. It's not just an American problem either. Scotland has had a 33% rise of people losing their homes. For every $100 an Australian earns, they owe $130. What about you? Have you experienced difficulty paying every bill on time? Would you say your financial house is in order? Stay tuned to Beyond Today as we discuss the problem of, and the solutions to, the debt trap. Join our host, Steve Myers, and his guests as they help you understand your future on Beyond Today. If you've worried about your debt, you're not alone. Why has it become such a prevalent problem? Welcome to Beyond Today, where we help you understand your future. My name is Steve Myers. To discuss our topic today, I've invited two guests to join me. Rex Sexton is a pastor and a certified financial planner. He's given counsel to families for years about financial planning. And Darius McNeely, he is a managing editor of the World News and Prophecy magazine. Welcome. Hello, Steve. Good to be here. Now, as we start to talk about the problem of debt, uh, probably the first thing that comes to mind, is it, is it really that serious? Steve, I don't think people understand where we are today in America's history because we have had something happen in the last five years that we've never seen before. After September 11th, the interest rates were artificially lowered, which caused a tremendous real estate boom and also a borrowing binge and spending spree like we've never seen. So many American families saw their, their values go up in their real estate. They then borrowed, and this money was pushed on them by mortgage companies and banks in an unprecedented fashion. And so they borrowed all this money to buy boats, toys, whatever else it might be, investments. Easy money. Easy money. And right now what's happening is it's, the uh, rates are rising. In parlance, the chickens are coming home to roost. About one-third of all mortgages given out in the last five years are adjustable rate mortgages, which means as the rates go up, according to the Fed, their rates will also go up, their monthly payments. And people are shocked now as to how much their payments are going up. As a result of that, in some cities back east, the, the foreclosure rate now is five times what it was the same month one year ago. And what's looming on the horizon is a dark cloud of foreclosures and perhaps a drop in real estate prices. But more than that, we're going to find really millions of American families on the verge of bankruptcy because they have spent so much and borrowed so much and lived so high for the past five years. And all of a sudden, they're going to find themselves unable to sustain that debt. It seems that you can't help but turn on the television and say, refinance your home, get an equity loan. And those kinds of things just are offering more and more free things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I read an article the other day that talked about credit cards. And each of us, on an average in America, each household receives one offer for a credit card every week. Every week one comes in the mail. And yet, the funny part is, it seems that we're not really that concerned about credit card debt. Most people aren't. It, uh, it, it is prevalent uh, across society. Uh, like you, I get uh, several every week in my mail. In fact, I, I bought a new item for my office in my home, which is a paper shredder, just to shred all of the credit card offers that come into my home because I didn't want the, those offers to fall into unscrupulous hands and ruin my credit. So I had to buy a new, new piece of, of equipment. But uh, because of the commonality of these credit cards. People have a wallet full of cards and it's very easy to pull that out for a purchase that uh, is a, creates a lot of impulse buying that people have, run the, the debt up, or if a, a breakdown with their car happens or something needs to be fixed in the house or purchased for the home, it's so easy to put it on that credit card and put it on the second credit card if you've maxed out the first. It, it's a, a problem uh, across the board in our country today because of the prevalence of free credit. I, I was surprised to, to read an article that said 60% of us who have credit cards don't pay it off every month, that we let those, in, those finance charges build and build and build, and it just seems to be so easy to let it go. I, all I have to do is make the minimum payment, mm -hmm. and I'm okay, right? We, we seem to fool ourselves, and it seems that even, even the kids are confronted with that problem as, as they're just starting out uh, their lives. That's true. You know, Steve, a lot of the problem is the way the banks have been just pushing credit cards on the American public in a way they, they wouldn't do 20 or 30 years ago. As an illustration, uh, my son, when he went to college a few years ago as a freshman, ended up about a year later severely in debt with a credit card. And he had no job. He had no prospect of a job. The only money he had was what I gave him. And so I looked at this credit card bill and I thought, this is ridiculous. So I called the president of the bank. It was a very large ba bank in the West Coast. And I finally got through to the vice president of the credit card services. And I said, why did you give my son a credit card? 
And he said, well, if we don't, somebody else will. In fact, my son said there were 12 tables lined up as the freshmen, 12 tables of banks lined up as the freshmen really? made their, their registration, all of them offering them credit cards. So I asked this vice president, why do you do that? He said, to begin with, well, we want them to develop a relationship with us. I said, come on, they have no job, they can't qualify. He said, well, really, I'll tell you, we know their parents will, in most cases, bail them out. And I said, well, look, you strike me almost as like drug dealers. You want to get these kids started when they're young on this habit of doing something wrong, so we later cash in. And he finally admitted, he says, well, really, he said, you're right. He said, I've had those same thoughts myself. He said, I really wish we would change the way we do this credit card thing with the kids. So it's, it's dangerous. It can get people in trouble at a very young age. It's almost the American way, isn't it? <laughs> well, unfortunately, it is. And another thing about these credit card offers that come, that most people will readily sign off and, and request the card if it comes, no, no annual fee, a low interest. But they don't read the fine print. And the, it's the fine print that is, are in these offers that state terms there that can change at the whim of the credit card company. And that's the most important part, the fine that print, is, really. It is the, the, the fine print here especially because they can, up, they can increase the interest rate. If you miss a payment, you can go from 18% to 28% or more overnight if you just miss one payment. If they think that, that you're, you've, you've racked up too much debt on that card, they can put it up. So most people don't know that. In fact, most of the lawyers who work for these credit card companies would be hard-pressed, as some of them are, to explain all that fine print. But that's where the, the devil truly is in, in the details of the fine print of these offers. Mm -hmm. So the easy money, the, the, the access that we have, right. it's, it's tough in the end, but it's easy to get to begin with. And yes. then, then we get ourselves in the trouble because we, we want things, we, we, we deserve things. Well, there's, <laughs> there's something that psychologists have identified in the human psych, and it's true of you and me and on all of us, there's nothing we can avoid. That money you save, you very carefully spend. You, you, you garner that money carefully. So if you spend, let's say, three years saving $5,000, which is difficult for most American workers, you will guard that money. You won't spend it very quickly. However, if you get $5,000 in a credit card limit, for some reason we are so easy to spend borrowed money. And it's, it's something like there's something missing in our brain that this, is, that this borrowed money is somehow easier and cheaper. And perhaps it's part of the uh, soul story that things that are easy come, easy go. But people have to realize when they get a credit card, they will spend that money far easier than money they save. And just simply looking in the mirror and realizing that is a very important step to avoiding credit card debt. So really what it comes down to then when you talk about the easy mortgages, the easy uh, credit cards, things like that, it, it comes down to the fact that we spend more than we really have. We spend more than we earn, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. That, that's uh, what they are hoping that we will do. They know that we will do that. And for many people... Maybe they are truly um, under-earning. They're, they're not earning that much. Maybe a lot of people today work two and three jobs just to make ends meet. The credit cards are a means of, they think, extending their income, and they're, they're easily accessible. They, they, they can get them, and they start racking up thousands of dollars of debt uh, with no hope of being able to pay that off. And uh, that, that's truly one of the you know, biggest problems we have today. Now, numbers involved in that. You know, are there portions of society that are affected by those that, that just can't catch up, those that are, that are okay? Well, how does that work? Well, according out? to the latest stats I have, about America's divided into thirds. Approximately one-third of all American families not only are making a good living, they're paying all of their bills and saving. But the next third in the middle are spending what they earn. So they're just barely, you know, sort of hand to mouth, but they are getting by just fine. But the lower third, and this is a very huge number when you think of it in, in raw numbers, approximately one third of all American families are actually going behind every month. They are using the credit cards, the borrowing against their house, and other means to where they spend more than they make. And we are looking, if this trend continues, at perhaps 20 to 30 percent of American families being on the ropes financially in a serious way in the next five years. It's a, it's a dangerous time like we've never seen before. Hmm. Are you in that position? There's solutions. We've got a booklet. We hope you'll order it. It's called Managing Your Finances. It will help you get out of the problem, It'll help you see exactly why you're where you're at and, and how you can get the help that you need. It's free. Get on the Internet. Go to beyondtoday.tv. Order your copy. It'll come to you free in the mail, or you can go ahead and download it and start reading it right away. Stay tuned because there's some solutions to your debt problems, maybe from a source you're not aware of. With your personal finances beamed by satellites to banks all over the world, how do you stay on top of managing your money? Some people pray money will somehow fall from heaven, and others may flee from money problems with a flying leap into debt. 
but you can get real-world solutions to avoid the free fall in a disaster by applying the rock-solid principles of financial success. They're found in your free copy of the booklet, Managing Your Finances. Call toll-free 1-888-886-8632 or go to beyondtoday.tv to learn how to budget to solve your financial problems and build a future of financial success. Learn to avoid all the financial black holes, traps, and bad ideas. Learn to discipline yourself in the right uses of money. Get back on solid ground by calling now toll-free 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go online to beyondtoday.tv for your free booklet, Managing Your Finances. Many of you watching today are worried about money. You may be caught in a debt trap. How do you get out? We've got a booklet to help manage your finances. We hope it's not the other way around. Are your finances managing you? Are you in control? Can you make ends meet? There are solutions. We hope you'll order our booklet to help you with practical solutions to get a handle on your debt. Beyondtoday.tv is where you can download it free or order it. It'll come right in the mail. Now we've been talking about finances, getting a handle on finances, the difficulty with managing you know, our money. Is there a guidebook? Is, is there a source that we can go to, maybe a, a financial management book that can really help us to really get a handle on it? Well, there, there is, Steve. In, in today's world, we have, there are many books that have been written that are very good books on any bookshelf in a library or at a bookstore detailing tremendously valuable information about how to budget money, what the, uh, how to invest it, how to deal with it, and how to handle your own personal incomes. Uh, there are tremendous amount of information on the web. There's information through cable uh, television shows uh, that uh, have financial advisors that are on every week. So those but, are just every day, there they are all over the place. And, and, and it's good information, and it's readily available. But there is one source that most peop many people overlook, uh, and yet those that have understood some of the basic principles out of the Bible uh, understand that that is a really the foundational book uh, to go to in many different ways. That's got to be surprising sources. for some people. The Bible? Why, why would you turn well, to the Bible? Well, you can go to the book of Proverbs, and you will see a number of Proverbs there that talk about borrowing and lending and talking about being frugal. The, the example of the ant and the grasshopper uh, comes out of, of the uh, book of Proverbs. The Gospels, uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ, are uh, full of examples of Christ using pounds and money and, and monetary terms to describe the kingdom of God, to describe spiritual concepts, to describe spiritual character in people. Uh, the parable of the pounds, the parable of the talents, sower and the seed, so many different par parables that, that are there are Christ bases it upon money. Hmm. and people's use of money, people's abuse of money. So you're not going to find the budget worksheets, you're not going to find... You won't find that, the budget worksheets, right. but you'll find a, a, a solid principles there that will help you f form a foundation for sound financial management. So we live by those, learn those principles, right. live by them, then that helps us to manage what we've got going. Then you can take all the other material that is readily available in our world today and build on top of that for a good, solid financial plan. Hmm. So that really then poses the question, why should I look for the Bible for financial help? Why would that be a better source than the book on the uh, bookshelf library uh, you know, in our local town? Why would that be better? Well, see, there are several key scriptures that if you only learned those could change your entire life. Uh, Proverbs 22 and verse 7 says that the borrower is a slave to the lender. So what God is saying is when you voluntarily borrow money, you are voluntarily becoming someone else's slave. In other words, they will send you a statement each month. You've got to send them money, and they will extract interest. So we need to be very cautious about falling for all of these gimmick sales about zero down or no payments free or whatever. You are voluntarily putting yourself into slavery. And also, First Timothy 6 mentions that those that would be rich pierce themselves through with many sorrows. And it, it isn't just themselves. It's also their family members. And sometimes they get to where they can't, you know, can't sleep. They may have stomach problems. But on a, you know, on a personal level, we, we, we sacrifice our relationships. Sometimes because we want more things and more money, we get into debt. And fathers are not able to spend as much time with their children or they neglect their wives. Uh, sometimes women have to go to work. They neglect their children, put them in daycare because they want a bigger house and a bigger car. Not necessities, but just more things that their neighbors may have. So looking at the scriptures hopefully will protect some of those relationships because it is, after all, relationships with the people that we love that matter far more than money. And those things need to be taught, and those principles come out of God's Word. So it's not a dusty old book. It's not an old no. thing that we just throw it away. No. Principles that, that are you know, 
long lasting over hundreds of years these principles hold true what people don't realize is, is that even in the old testament there are sound economic principles dealing with the bondage of, of economic slavery that people get into and even bankruptcy laws uh, that are there god put into the really the constitution of, of his nation israel to protect the relationships Rex is talking about, that people get into, they get crossways in because of financial difficulties. Some of God's basic principles dealing with uh, bankruptcy, uh, economic slavery, are, were designed to help people get out of that and to preserve the integrity of the family, the husband and wife relationship, and that of the, the, the parents to the children, so that economic slavery and, and debt and problems would not be passed on to children, to ch their children's children, if they followed sound uh, financial laws. And God was a very practical God. He knew that people would get into trouble, and he actually uh, incorporated this into his word, into his law uh, there in the, in the Old Testament, to help people manage their money, manage their, their families and their relationships, and the most important one, which is with him. So we get those priorities in order. We, we put God first, we put mm -hmm. that priority in order, and then we can begin to see that he understood what we had the potential to be like, and he gave us the solutions to overcome those, those shortcomings. Because it, it, greed and, and the, the things that Americans generally want, that's our goal, to, to see how much we can earn. Mm -hmm. And yet... It is amazing how that seems to separate us from what, what really, really is most important, doesn't it? Well, see, those of us who have done a lot of marriage counseling, one thing I've noticed over the years, and this is found out by psychologists too, is that women cannot tolerate the stress of debt that men can. We men, I don't know what's wrong with us in our brains, but <laughs> we can somehow charge up big debt. We can do risky things. We can have thousands of dollars on, on credit cards, and we can sw somehow live life just fine. It doesn't seem to bother us as long as we can make the payments. Not so with women, and some wives who are listening will understand this, that when they find out how much their husband has borrowed, in some cases because he hasn't told them, and they worry. I mean, they can't sleep, they develop stomach problems, ulcers, whatever it might be. But a man has to be very concerned that, and understand that his wife simply cannot tolerate the debt level. Uh, those financial problems, women, uh, they like to have security. God made them that way. They are they, they're to be keepers at home in that sense. And so it's important that we understand this can hurt a wife and a woman far more than it can a man. So it comes down to the fact that if we look to the Bible and its principles to help us out, a basic one that the Bible would say, if we went right down, okay, let's, let's talk about a basic principle, get us out of debt, what would God tell us if he could talk directly to us? He would say, come up with a plan, and he would say, stick to it, and be very cautious. Not so we got a budget. Let, right, not let greed and impulse buying destroy your budget. And then also to be very considerate, you know, dwell with your wife and your husband according to knowledge, and to understand that in the long run, it is not physical things that make you happy. It is the relationships we have with each other, and more than that, even our relationship with God. And if we put those things first, and put him first, and then our family second, it's amazing how the rest of our life seems to, you know, flow well, and we don't have those stresses. What's most important in your life? Have you considered turning to the Bible, looking to God to help guide your finances? Stay tuned, and we'll look at biblical keys to get you free of debt. Some people pray money will somehow fall from heaven, and others may flee from money problems with a flying leap into debt. But you can get real-world solutions to avoid the free fall into disaster by applying the rock-solid principles of financial success. They're found in your free copy of the booklet, Managing Your Finances. Call toll-free 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go online to beyondtoday.tv. Every family needs a steady diet of good news, so get yours with your free subscription to the Good News Magazine. You'll regularly read about how to apply principles of family success that always work, raise happy children, enhance and solve problems in your relationship, and move ahead by calling toll-free 1-888-886-8632 or go online to beyondtoday.tv for the good news. Help your family succeed. There is good news. We have a magazine just for you. We hope you'll order this magazine. Go to the website. You get this for free. It'll come to your house absolutely for free. Great articles in here, not only to help you with your finances, but also articles to help you with your family, your relationships, your relationship with God. Important things that you need in your life. We hope you'll order the Good News magazine. It's absolutely free, so get your copy today. Now, we've been talking about the debt trap and the difficulties that so many of us find ourselves in. And as we start to try to struggle our way out, what, what can we really do to begin to break that trap of debt? 
Well, Steve, I get asked occasionally to make presentations to high school groups, either in church groups or in alternative high schools, and I've got a presentation about financial management. It's called The Way Money Works. But I start out with a big blackboard or whiteboard, and I have two words, because high school students can boil it down to two words, and I think it's a good thing to do for all of us. But the first word is no. So I write no in large letters on one side of the board, and then list all the things you have to say no to. Say no to impulse buying, say no to borrowing on credit, except for your primary home, and say no to fast food every day, try to save something cheaper. So you know, say no to all these things that will destroy your budget and prevent you from doing the second word, which is the word save. So I put the word save up, and I show them how they need to be saving towards goals, short-term saving and long-term, and set aside a certain amount of money, even if it's only a very small amount every paycheck. Just the, the fact that you set aside some money for yourself makes a change in your thinking that's very important, because then you're thinking about working towards a future of being out of debt and of having some assets set aside, rather than simply borrowing, trying to get more toys. Now, there's a third, more important aspect I don't talk about often to the high school groups because it involves what we talked about earlier concerning God's Word. But God to say we need to put Him first and, and make Him our partner and look at His, not only His purpose in our life and our relationships that we ought to have, but also to look at how he should be first in a financial way too that he commanded years ago tithing and to put him give him the first tenth of our income and i've seen time and time again that god honors his promise that if we will put him first he will open the doors of heaven and really bless us it's also a character issue that if we learn how to put god first with our finances that it helps us then to be able to say no to all the salesmen and the zero down and the zero payment options and offers out there and also learning to save we pay God, and we learn also to pay ourselves each time. So in a sense, it's a, it's a change. We have to change our way of thinking. Exactly. Uh, fair to say we've got to change our lifestyle? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you begin to do some of the things that most financial counselors will tell people who are caught in the debt trap, uh, usually one of the first things they tell them to do is they want them to hand over all their credit cards. And that could be a stack uh, several inches high on this <laughs> table here. And they take those credit cards, and they, they shred them. Some of them even, even do that as a kind of a ritual to just illustrate the point that you've got to break this, out. You've got to break this cycle <laughs> of addiction that you're in mm -hmm. to using these in an in a irregular way. And so they, they shred those, those credit cards. That's probably, and for many people, that is inconceivable, that that would hap be a way of life that they could get used to without li you know, using that credit card, putting it down for a meal, for a pizza, for a pair of shoes, for a pair of sunglasses, or for a you know, long weekend someplace that they really cannot afford. Yeah, and I suppose in a sense that illustrates that we, we've destroyed physically and for us our purposes today there's a spiritual element really when you get down to it the spiritual element if we're going to break the trap of debt what do we do according to what god tells us in his financial plan well rex introduced the concept of tithing he mentioned that as a biblical what principle. is that tithing that may be a foreign word to some of our it, viewers. well it is tithing is from an old english word which basically means 10 percent it's a tenth you're tenthing mm -hmm. and it refers to a a 10 percent of one's income uh, the scriptures teach the principle of tithing. That is from the book of, of uh, Genesis all the way through the Bible, there is, is that taught in terms of tithing and giving to God what is His. The proverb that talks about honoring God with, his, with uh, your possessions. Mm -hmm. By giving God what He claims is His, which is only 10% of, let's say, 100% of the pie of our income, God only has a claim of 10%, the first 10%, uh, as, as He says is His to be given uh, to support His work uh, as that work is being done through His, his servants. And it is a spiritual principle that God even says is a principle, a living principle that if you honor me, I will honor you in that way. There's a scripture in Malachi that says that uh, prove me now on this. And for most of us, we have to prove God to see if that indeed is a spiritual principle that does work in our life and produces physical return for giving God. It doesn't sound logical. It doesn't sound like it works, but it does work. And the, the Bible says that it will work. God says, prove me and I'll open up the windows of heaven for you. And frankly, a lot of very successful people have learned that principle of tithing and practice that with their incomes and reap the physical benefits and the spiritual benefits as well. So God says, look, out, look outside yourself, make right. me a priority. Put away that 10%, give it back to God in a sense. Understand where it, first, where it comes from to begin yeah, with. Yeah, he gave it to us to begin with. And that, that reorients our mind and our whole thinking to put it on God rather than just on ourselves, what we want, what we think we have to have to maintain a certain status or way of life. That it almost gets back to what Rex was, Rex was saying about mm. 
a relationship. We've got to have our relationship with God, right? First and, with God. And we're not going to be able to handle the whole thing ourselves. Right. We need help from God. Sure. And you ask, what can people do if they are in debt? Um, I think a lot of our audience, at least a third of Americans, are heading towards there, or they are there now, where they simply see no way out. Uh, the first step, obviously, is to get a budget and no longer spend more than you earn. And know if, where you're at. Know where you're at. <laughs> and most Americans, frankly, can go on a selling binge, not a buying binge. They can scour the house for things they can sell either on the Internet or through garage sales. In some cases, they might be in debt for a vehicle or perhaps an RV, something that they really don't need or use. They could downsize. Mm -hmm. And even if they have to pay to get rid of it, they are better off to stop the cash flow hemorrhaging and get themselves on a sound footing. And it's amazing to me how wives will often, they will just, they love this. They will help their husbands do all they can to get themselves on sound financial footing. So once those drastic steps are taken, um, then they can begin to live a life that's a lot more, that's calmer. They can develop the relationships. They can see that the things that really are important in life, they have time for. And it really is a, a change in the way that we think. Unfortunately, our society pushes us toward this other way of thinking, mm -hmm. the materialism, borrowing, getting more. And so we need, to, we need to see change in the way that we think towards goods and money. There's, so, a, there's a spinoff effect to that, too. If two people work together to get out of debt, right. the, what, it's unimaginable what they will learn about themselves and how much closer they will draw together and be, their marriage will be better off for having gone through that exercise if they work together. Okay, so put God first, get him involved in our finances, right. stop the bleeding, <laughs> is that a fair way to say it? Stop the bleeding first right. and then formulate a plan. Right, a plan, and then mm -hmm. work together to achieve those goals. So, so it is possible. We don't have to be slaves to debt. Getting out of debt, staying out of debt, it's a step-by-step -step process. But we've got to put God first, take that first step, and we can get there. There is hope. Stay tuned. There's a way out. We'll be right back. Some people pray money will somehow fall from heaven, and others may flee from money problems with a flying leap into debt. But you can get real-world solutions to avoid the free fall into disaster by applying the rock-solid principles of financial success. They're found in your free copy of the booklet, Managing Your Finances. Call toll-free 1-888-886-8632. That's 1-888-886-8632. Or go online to beyondtoday.tv. We've been talking about the debt trap here on Beyond Today. You may be there, but there's solutions. There's solutions to the problems. We've, we've looked at so many difficulties that we can get ourselves into today, but you know, there's hope. We need to look to the ultimate financial guidebook. We need to look to the Bible. We need a relationship with God. We need to put first things first. We can help you find what's first, what needs to be first in your life, through our booklet, Managing Your Finances. This will help you to discover ways to budget, ways to get a hold of your debt and to get out from under that huge, huge pile of debt that, that you may find yourself in. Because no doubt financial troubles and debt, they're a huge problem. But you don't have to be under that weight. It's not difficult to understand how to get out, but we've got to make the first steps. We've got to get out and put our money in our control. Don't let money control us. But it's going to take commitment. You can take control of your money. Order our free literature. It'll help you organize. It'll help you manage. It'll help you put first things first and really change your life. It's like the modern-day proverb. It's good to have money in the things that money will buy, but it's also good to make sure we haven't lost the things that money can't buy. Rex and Darius, thanks for being guests today. Glad you're welcome. Here. When you're looking for ways to understand your finances, ways to understand your future, we hope you'll remember this program and look beyond today. Thanks for watching. For the free literature offered on today's program, go online to beyondtoday.tv. Please join us again next week on Beyond Today.